been nudged and guided to share this story with you. So I trust whoever is guided to this video and this message will get exactly what they need. And I just looked at the clock and it's 1044. And that's, that's a synchronicity for me. So, so I know this message will resonate with whoever needs to hear it. So earlier on in my spiritual journey, this was like 2012, so a little over 11 years ago, based on the time of this recording, I was sitting in meditation and meditating on who am I, and then asking God, asking the universe, whoever was listening, what is the purpose? Why am I here? And then I surrendered it and let it go with every intention and expectation that I was going to receive my answer. I went about my day and then my mom and I started running errands and we went to the grocery store and she came back um, from the grocery store because I stayed in the car. When she got out of the grocery store, she got us some waters and stuff and she had some change. All she had was a quarter though and she put it in my cup holder. Normally, I'm really tidy. I don't like anything in my cup holders. Kind of weird. I just would normally ask her just to keep it because I don't like that or put it in like, put it like, I don't know, in her purse or something. But for some reason, I just knew that that quarter was going to be significant and I didn't know why. But I was like, okay, just set it here, you know, put it in the cup holder. We went straight to the gas station after that, and the second I opened my door, a gentleman walked up and asked for a quarter. He needed some change for the bus fare. He didn't ask for change. He didn't ask for bus fare. He didn't ask for a dollar. He asked for a quarter. Exactly what I had. Not a penny more, not a penny less. That's all I had. That's all my mom had. All we had together was a quarter between the two of us. And right then I had this huge aha moment and kind of started to flip out to my mom. I was like, mom, I got my answer. I got my answer. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I said, it's all connected. Everything's connected. And then it was funny because my mind immediately wanted to try to make sense of it. And I was having this inner knowing that everything was all connected. And I was just, I was just on cloud nine because I was, it was exhilarating to have that kind of confirmation. And I know it sounds super simple and super silly, but at the, in the moment it was, it was everything. It was so magical. So then I got home, we finished running some errands and I was walking the dogs in the neighborhood. And as I'm walking the, the dogs around the neighborhood, uh, there's a woman that came out of one of the houses and she was a realtor and she came right out of the house on the opposite side of the street. It was like a little neighborhood street. So it wasn't like a major crossroad or anything. But she just came right out of the house and started talking, came across the street and started a conversation with me. And she was just telling me how excited she was because this was her first house and her buyers are in there looking at it right now and they're so excited and they want to write an offer. So she's out here waiting for them so they can talk it out. And she's like telling me how exciting this is, but she's got one concern. And I was like, what? And she said, they're really concerned about the roof because the roof doesn't look like it's in good shape and she's worried that's going to blow the deal. And I was a real I was practicing real estate at the time and I had sold a couple houses in that neighborhood and I actually knew uh, one of my clients was on the board at the HOA in that neighborhood so I knew that in 30 days all the roofs in that neighborhood were going to be replaced and the HOA was paying for it. And so she told me this and I said, oh, well, just don't worry about it. Call the HOA 
and get confirmation from them so you can deliver it to your client in writing and let them know that all the roofs are being replaced in 30 days. So it should all be taken care of. And I started to walk away with the dogs and then it I'm like, oh my God, it happened again. Like the universe, God, the divine was just hitting a home run again. I had exactly what she needed. I was reflecting back what she needed. Just like earlier with the story with the quarter. And then it began to, to dawn on me that not only is everything connected, but that we are all playing our parts. That we are all connected to this infinite intelligence. There's a divine design. There's a energy that connects us all. And we're all playing our parts for each other. We are all connected through this divine energy expressing here as physical beings. But there's something so much more beyond the physical that is orchestrating everything. And we are all parts of the whole. We are seemingly separate parts of the whole, but only seemingly, only in the physical reality do we look separate from each other. Now taking this a step further, everything on your path you've created, whether you've consciously called it in, like in my story, or whether you've been living more unconsciously and, and through knee-jerk reactions, there is a divine design and intelligence, a creative life force energy that pumps through everything that is everything that connects us all. The same energy that somehow directs the flower to grow towards the sunlight, the same energy that naturally heals the human body or beats your heart, the same energy, the aliveness, the energy that creates everything. It's all connected and we are all playing our seemingly separate parts for each other. And so to take this a step further, take a moment to think about the different encounters you've had on your journey. It's all divinely guided. You have cast the perfect roles in your story to reflect back to you exactly what you need. I used to think that we were all just being used by spirit. We were all just like divine puppets. And in, in a sense, that's true. We are all messengers for each other. We are all showing up in each other's story, giving and receiving exactly what is necessary and needed for each other's growth process, for each other's journey, the journeyless journey, the journey that takes no time, the journey that has no distance, journey that will eventually lead you back home and so these these roles have all been cast by you and when I say you not the personal you not the personality the the mind or the ego or the character your soul the infinite part of yourself be even beyond the soul that connects all souls the infinite intelligence, the master puppeteer, the divine design, the mystery man behind the curtain, the mystery woman behind the curtain. I'm just teasing, it's not gender specific, but you know what I mean. Everything is rigged. 
everyone is showing up to your experience and playing their perfect part. They're all getting a standing ovations in the ethers for the role that they've played on your journey and vice versa. We are all messengers for each other. We are all giving to each other exactly what we need for each other's awakening, whether that awakening is in this lifetime or another lifetime. But if you're resonating with this message and some of my other messages on this channel and you find yourself resonating with the messages I share, you are there's a good chance you're likely here to experience self-realization in this lifetime and come into unity consciousness in this lifetime and fully realize yourself as the divine energy and love that connects us all as one. Really what's happening is the other person in your story is you. Whether that person played a quote-unquote positive role in your life or something that you would deem troublesome, whether they were a major catalyst in your growth, shaking up your world, getting you to question your belief systems, getting you to question your sense of self, getting you to look at your shadow, bringing that to the surface, they are you. There is no separation. The divine is dancing and playing all roles. This is the one self appearing as eight billion selves. This is the one self appearing and take it a step further, appearing as everything. Not just the people, but the dogs on my walk too. My dogs and the trees and the birds and the leaves and the grass and everything along your journey is all it. Everything is it. The synchronicities that you're experiencing should be enough to point you to this. How are you always in the perfect place at the perfect time? Have you ever asked yourself that? For as many synchronicities as you're seeing, how is that possible to always be in the right place at the right time? The other day I was really um, just uh, playing around with synchronicity, right? And how synchronicity is the language of oneness. It's just automatically the nature of alignment with all that is. And so I was asleep on the couch and all of a sudden I jolted up awake and I looked at the clock and it was 10.10. 10. And it was like I was peaceful asleep and then all of a sudden, boom, woke up, something startled me up. There was no sounds or noises. It was just me just rising up and looking right at 10.10. 10. So I was like, okay. So then I laid back down and dozed off again because I was so tired. And then all of a sudden I jolted awake again and it was 1044, the other number I told you about earlier. And I was like, okay. And so then I fell back to sleep and this time I was slowly becoming awake and I was remembering the last two times what happened and I was like there's no way there's no way there's no way this is going to happen again and I laid there in sort of like a a pseudo sleep state where I was just like talking myself out of jolting awake and looking because there's like no way that's going to happen again if I look at the clock because this time I was like trying to like figure it out in my mind I was questioning it my mind was questioning it so I so I was said that to myself like a couple of times and then I just woke up 
and looked at the clock and it was 11 11. <laughs> this wasn't even me, you know, looking at a clock or driving past a, do- a license plate or looking at a receipt or online seeing something because I'm in the physical world doing things. This was me passed out on the couch, not once, not twice, but three times with something, quote unquote, something jolting me awake at just the right time. At just the right time. And even on the time that I was stalling, because I remembered what happened the first two times, and so on the third time, I had a, you know, a little, I didn't jolt right up. I slowly started to wake up that time. And I was like, there's just not, that's just not going to happen again. I stalled just long enough, unconsciously, just stalled just enough talking to myself to wake up at just the right time. <laughs> None of this was my doing. Who's doing it? What's doing it? How is it possible? As you go about your day and you're experiencing these synchronicities, that should tell you something. And even the seemingly, the most insignificant decisions that you make, that you think you're making, to go to the grocery store at just the right time, to leave your house just at the right time, to get in the car just at the right time, to turn left instead of turn right, to go to that store instead of that store. Every decision, every micro decision perfectly aligns you with all of the synchronicities that are flooding your experience. And you're not even thinking about them. They're just happening. They're happening on their own. This is why I always say synchronicity is the language of oneness. Because oneness, there is no room for you in oneness. There is no you and there is no me. You and me are appearing as separate selves. Just like the gentleman that asked me for a quarter or the lady that shared her concern about her client and the roof. He didn't ask me for a quarter knowing that it was going to have some significant impact on me. And she didn't know that if she came up and asked me or shared her concern about the roof or whatever, that that was going to have an impact. There was no intention behind it. It was just what was happening. And it was the perfect rendezvous, the perfect players in my story to give me exactly what I needed. And in exchange, I was also giving them exactly what they needed. We are all messengers. And we are always giving and receiving exactly what we need for each other's growth. And so if you're listening to this and you're recognizing that there's a lot of players in your story... You've cast a lot of good players in your story. This can take the edge off if you can really tap into what I'm pointing to here. That everyone is playing their perfect role. And ultimately, you are them and they are you. Because we are all connected by the same life force, creative energy, infinite intelligence, divine, loving energy, whatever you want to refer to it as, which is why we're able to play the perfect role for each other, because there is no other, it's all just oneness appearing as separate individuals and life itself. You are divine. You are God. You are love. You are energy, just like everybody else. 
and everybody's playing the perfect role and the entire thing is rigged in your favor for your awakening. It's inevitable. It's inevitable that you will come home and that you will realize the unity in all things. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.